Razor, welcome back to the studio. And we're joined in the studio today by, with Autism Mums, a Facebook group set up for Newry and District, really, you know, um, South Down, South Armagh, North Louth, let's call it. Um, we're joined, we've got Alicia McEvitt and Aideen Cunningham. Welcome to the studio, ladies. How you doing? Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank and you for having us. great, you know, and um, we miss Carla today. Yeah, yeah, Carla. Yeah, Carla Campbell. Big shout yeah. out to Carla. Funny enough, in a matter last night, you know. But uh, here's it's time to get this off. It's too hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> love that. <Yeah. there. laughs> I'm getting good at that, aren't I? But tell us about autism mums, then, will you? Well, autism mums is actually the brainchild of Carla. She started it up. Good girl, um, Carla. Mm -hmm. She initially it started off just as a Facebook page, yes. and then. There was parents gradually, you know, like Carla added me into the group and then I added other girls that I knew. So the group was growing steadily and then we did a piece for the New Democrat and then after that it, really we, took, off. it took off. So, so it started off really Carla <laughs> It started and, and off as a, as a page where we could go on and chat to each other and give each other advice about our kids and, you know, what we're going through and that. But then it, it ended up... Up, when we realised that how, how many people in the area needed it, and we, we knew ourselves that there's a lot more support needed for autistic children yeah. and their parents, then it's we decided to go ahead and... It's sort of strange that it, that it was a... Uh, that it took Carla to, you know, to start a Facebook yeah. group. Yeah. yeah. But it shows you the power of social media, and then it started off, friends, as I think it was four members. And four I, members. As four I, met, members, I met Carla last night, and it started off four, and tell me how many members there is now. There's 40, is over it? 40 now. Yeah, over, and over 40. That's, yeah. But that's uh, members as in parents. But within the group, like we have, I'd say there'd be over 100 children now, you know. Because yeah, because we in our group, it's siblings as well. It's not just the kids with because autism. Right. It's because good for the children. Yeah. To good inclusion. Yeah. 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 And then. About them coming, all coming together. and. Like oh, so that, that makes sense. That, that, that makes a lot of sense because it's not just. Uh, you know, including the autistic child, so including oh, no, the brothers siblings. and the sisters. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, because that's they're a, affected by it too. Yeah, but that, you know, that's helping maybe them understand yeah. as well. Oh, it is, surely. And, and they see other kids outside of their own home life who have autism and they can relate to that and say, oh, sure, yeah. I know how to do that. Yeah. You know, Lachlan does that or Dara does that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like my so you're picking up tips and stuff like that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, like my yeah. eldest son now, whenever my wee fella initially get diagnosed and he an autistic child takes up all your time without a doubt between going through the intervention programs and just going through their daily needs do you still really need a cater for everything near enough like a newborn but my two eldest Lachlan came third out of the four and the two eldest had no clue at all about why Lachlan was different what his needs was they just seen Lachlan took up all mommy's time and were kind of a wee bit jealous so with the group and stuff as well like, my eldest boy now has such an understanding of autism and children with autism. He's fantastic and he'll interact with all the children. Yeah, so it's great. it's great to have that understanding good, amongst yeah. siblings and stuff as well, you know. And yeah. Because at the end Even of the in day... Our, in our first play session, we, we had our first get-together for all the parents and the kids in the fun house on the 19th of April. It was a Saturday morning. We'll have another one tomorrow morning. But the likes of Sean, Alicia's eldest wee boy... A wee autistic fellow was there, Oshin. Yeah, Oshin. Oh, he took such class. a shine to Sean, and Sean took him everywhere. It was not true. Right, the fun I yeah. was, it was, What age is Sean then? Sean's 11, but the thing is, because Sean has grown up with this, yeah. um, it's second nature to Sean. Sean yeah. just will automatically, he'll not see a child with autism as any different. Yeah. So it's brilliant because we have younger siblings coming along, and them yeah. seeing older children interacting with the younger children stuff, it's, it's fantastic. But yeah. We've organised our play, it's, it's a play and chat session down the fun house. Yeah. We're doing it once a month. That's down in the Green Bank, by the way, isn't it? It is, down yeah. the Green Bank, yeah. And the, the kids Bank. come at half ten. They open it up early for us before... Um, so it's not as noisy. Yeah. That's one thing that if we were to take our kids, say, at two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, it's packed and it's really, really noisy. And it's, they're overstimulated. They it. It, yeah. it, it actually hurts their ears. It physically yeah. hurts them. They can't cope because, with them to go. Because they're, 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 they're needs. very, very, uh, mm. they're very, very sensitive. Yeah. Here yeah. And a lot of now they love music as well, don't they? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But they don't like but high pitched it'll be, music. There will be so much noise, so many different noises going on at that time of the day where you have music, your children screaming. It's just yeah. too much, mm -hmm. and they would hear that all on yeah. a higher definition. And that's than we just would. they don't want to hear that. Yeah. End of story. So it's a lot calmer. 
for yeah. them to play in. Yeah. And because it's open early, there's no one near as many kids and there. Then, and then it's who they're comfortable with. So That's they're in it, a group, yeah. and then they know, obviously they know everybody in the group then. But then the kids is having their wee play, mm. and then they get their wee toast and juice yeah, after a while great. and stuff too. And it's that chance for even parents to sit and go, do you know what, Phew. I have had an <laughs> awful week. This boy was up all night, and we can say, well, this sorted my wee man out for a few nights anyway. It's given that wee bit of advice and stuff. Well, also, Carla has um, Samiri's Hall mm -hmm. on a Tuesday night once a month as well, and we're I doing... Th is, it the, <coughs> is it the second Tuesday? Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday. Yeah. Last week. See, <laughs> yeah. I remembered. I remembered. Um, we, we plan to do different wee things there. Like yeah. We're going to do ask, like ask wee art just for with them. Well, is that not just for the parents on a Tuesday night? It's not just for the parents. I thought the kids were going to be included in some of them as well. Oh, well, maybe they are, but I think speech therapists the and yeah. stuff coming. Speech common. therapists is coming, giving us different tips and stuff. And there's a uh, therapist from the early intervention team that's going to come coming, as well. Yeah. So all, all the help to that. So it's a, it's a, there's a lot going on now. Only without that group being started on Facebook, none of this would be happening, would it? No. I'm not joking you. At the point when Lachlan got diagnosed, I was lost. I had nobody to talk to, very, very nowhere isolated. to turn to, and nobody I had spoke to about Lachlan because he looks like any other typical child. Yeah. Yeah. You can't f physically yeah. see a difference in Lachlan than any other child. So <clears throat> I was completely lost, and I've lost count the amount of people saying, actually, there's no bother with him. Should yeah. look at him. He's a big, fine, no, lovely lad. He'd be grand. Yeah. He's just a bit slow. Yeah. was some of the comments and you had nowhere to turn to and no one to talk to as we're now like with the group it's fantastic Except it's been like a lifeline yeah for every D for yeah. all, all yeah. the parents concerned dad obviously got, dad got his diagnosis in november but the word autism was first mentioned to us at a uh, speech and um, speech language um, referral at the september before he hadn't he was still he was only two he hadn't even turned three mm. And he was sent for speech therapy, and at that session, autism was mentioned, and I just was so shocked. I wasn't expecting it at all. But for that whole year, over a year until the following November, there was nothing in place to help us because there's no services there until you get a diagnosis. So no, even we unbelievable. didn't know how to deal. Wait a long yeah, time. you wait a long time after that. So we we didn't know how to deal with all his problems, his behaviour problems, everything like that. Were, and plus we didn't, I had nobody to talk to, so... There you go. Because I yeah. find that as well, the behavioural problems are are key mm -hmm. to, once you get the behaviour problems in line... Very then, frustrated. Yeah. But it, they're so frustrated because yeah. my wee man had no speech, which left him frustrated, and it got to the point where he was up every night, all night crying, but he had no speech at that time. And one of our major breakthroughs where you felt like jumping up and down celebrating was, in the middle of the night, his first words was, Mama bread. The Would child was hungry, and that, that's well, why that's he was unreal. up awake and crying and stuff. Such simple wee things. You know, whenever <coughs> our kids reach a milestone. <laughs> but we all understand each other's yeah. milestones. If I said yeah. to you, my five-year-old said, Mama Bread, you'd be going, all right, dead yeah, on. Yeah, I'd be going. I know, the simple yeah. thing, yeah. Like, you know. like one of the big issues my son would have would be getting his haircut. It's yeah. so traumatising, and he has to be physically restrained. Mm -hmm. And God lucky enough, her. I have a fantastic hairdresser. Yeah. Who, God bless her. Always cuts her finger when she's doing it because she's trying to do it so fast because yeah. it's so traumatic for the child. Yeah. But just today, I um, I hate taking them. It's got to the stage where I actually get. Yeah, you get emotional. stressed out probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got a phone call there today to say that my dad had taken them, hers cut and all, and. It wasn't as bad as the last time, and he came on the phone to say that he was really brave. He got his heart Aww. cut, and like things like that, like people just take for granted. Oh, it's unbelievable, yeah. isn't yeah. it? You know, and so. uh, you know, as you were saying, you know, when your kids were diagnosed, and there there is no, uh, you know, visible disability. You're looking at a, yeah. a, a yeah. perfectly normal child, mm -hmm. but you don't know that the child has autism, and you're saying about <laughs> the isolation, and now. I suppose now as a group, you can all help each other out yeah. and spot different yeah. signs. And you know, maybe yeah. one of these <coughs> could advise the other girl. You know, it's not that you need to do that or whatever. Yeah, you but know? it's also yeah. even raising the profile of autism because yeah. at the point when autism was first mentioned to me, Lachlan was the same age as Dar, just about two, and I hadn't. I heard the word. I did not know what it was, what it meant. So within the group, if we're also raising the profile of autism, yeah. where 
people's understanding. Do you know when you see that child in Buttercrane having a complete meltdown and being a nightmare on the mum? Yeah. Maybe instead of looking, and I had it several times with Lachlan, people walking past going, that's a spoiled a brat. A spoiled brat, yeah. yeah. You step back and you go, you look at the parent going, maybe my God, wrong. I was there. Maybe there's something more to it. Maybe it's not a spoiled brat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So where people is and understanding it as well. Situation. You know, like I yeah, had... Yeah, it's a difficult, yeah. difficult thing. Yeah, well, and you're, you're in the middle of the public. A yeah, shopping mm -hmm. centre. And what's the first thing, as you say, that every parent's going to say, that's a spoiled brat there. Yeah. But sure, even you know, in they the don't doctor's think, surgery. People don't think seriously. Like Lachlan yeah. would have um, quite bad asthma as well, and it was during one of the times when he had a real bad bite with his asthma. I took him to the doctors for an appointment. So the doctors in itself, it's taken him out of his routine. He doesn't go to the doctors every day. So that in itself, he was already, because he was poorly, he, then you put on top of that, you're taking him out of his routine, you're taking him to the doctors. So in the doctor's surgery, he ended up getting onto the chair because he's overstimulated <clears throat> then by the crowd of doctor surgery and he had a complete meltdown, crying and kicking onto the chair. I had an older lady actually say to me that she needs a good slap. Do you know what I mean? So That old lady's going to get a slap. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. you're going through that with them. You, you're going through all those emotions. He's stressed, you're stressed, he's frustrated, you're frustrated. When he's crying, most of the time you actually feel it crying too. Yeah. Yeah. So if that woman maybe heard of autism or knew something about autism, she maybe wouldn't have said that child needs a good slap. She probably would have said... Some of and it, it's an awful thing too, but you feel like you're always having to explain your children's actions to people. Yeah. You, oh, feel you like shouldn't really have to do that. Yeah. Constantly having, even if they're just being hyper or, you know, you feel like you're constantly having to say to people, well, he's doing that because of this. Yeah. You know, you feel like you're always having to explain yourself on your child, which... Which is wrong. Yeah. Which is wrong. <coughs> well, I, I know sometimes, you know, little children growing up, they can't see things, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm, I'm talking about, if you can want to call it normal kids, you know, they can let you down a bag full just when you don't need it, you know. Uh, but, it's, you know, you're opening up an insight, you know, yeah. and I hope, I hope the people that, that are tuned in here today are learning, because I'm learning. Mm -hmm. I'm le it's a learning curve for us all, really, isn't it? But the main thing is we have to put out there the people too. It's hard work and it's frustration work and there's a lot but you get so much back. Oh, it's so see when you yeah, hit those just, milestones, yeah. it's amazing. They're such special kids. Yeah. And see the simple things like how literal they take <laughs> everything. Like my eldest, the, my two boys share a room and um, Lachlan pulled out all uh, Sean's clothes when he was looking for something and Sean being the only boy, I ain't gonna bust your head, I just cleaned that. And Lachlan just <laughs> into me and he goes, oh mommy, Sean said he's gonna bust my head and if my head busts, I'll, have, I'll just have a body with no head and then I'll die, what's going to happen? <laughs> you know, they take everything so literally. You can't say I'll bust yeah, your head because they expect yeah. yeah. that to happen, Black you know. And but, and that's but how quick he worked that out. Yeah, oh, you know, Darren we bust the head out of yeah. a little head, like, what am I going to do? You know? And then yeah. I'll just you know. have a body, and then I'll die. What am I going to do for food, <laughs> you know? And it, th they're so funny, and to be honest, I wouldn't change one thing about Lachlan for the I, whole I world. I would say him, and you if you meet any mother with a child with autism, they would say the exact same. Mm -hmm. I would not change my child for anything in the world, because he's so, so special. Yeah. yeah. And there's times where he just lights up your day, and just makes you smile, just, you know what? Only you're as special as you are. You know, yeah. it's the simplest things as well. Like, um, when La Lachlan, uh, children with autism tend to have a fascination with things. Yeah. Like, Lachlan, everything has to be in order. The cars would have been in order and stuff. But then his fascination moved on to numbers and letters. So he learned to write quite easily. So by P1, he wrote me this love, he made a Mother's Day card for me. Whoa. And wrote in it, Mom, I love you because you make nice dinners. You know, it's it wasn't that you make really good dinners. <laughs> he's class. saying it as it is and how he's saying yeah. you make nice dinners. You make nice dinners, <laughs> so I love you. That's pretty yeah. good. That's, that's class, you know. You know. The stuff that came out was unbelievable. And my we buy Dar would be like Lachlan, he speaks with an accent. <laughs> but the pick up accent. American or, or, or sometimes Australian. Dar's is an American accent. Yeah. Lachlan's so is, is an American accent as well because um, he'd be, Mom, can I cycle my bike on the sidewalk? And you're like, Huh? Where did you get that yeah. from? It's a footpath. <laughs> oh, and then he, said, he was writing his Christmas list and so he said, Mom, can I get a jump rope? And I look, and what is a jump rope? You hold it and you put it over and you jump. And I said, oh, that's a skipping rope. They pick up everything. Yeah. Like it's the, the Americanisms, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and pick up everything from the a, TV. You know, and it's a, there's different stages and there's different, you know, because um, I know some autistic kids and, and they're, they've got Australian accents, believe it or not, you know? Yeah. And they, my own cousin, and he's he's in his late fifties, 
And I don't know what I, I don't even think he has an accent. It's, it's hard. He doesn't speak a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, he, he, go he comes into your house, you go through every cupboard in the house, you know what I mean? And yeah. you just let him rattle away, for God's but sake. The thing is, autism is a spectrum as yeah, well. So and wide. You know, there's right over there the very severe end where a child may never speak. A ever. Or only never have ever maybe have 10 to 20 words. You know, and will never be able to live independently mm. and stuff like that. And then there's the other end down near the Asperger's end where they can function, but they'll have an awful lot of the social difficulties. And they'll find social in interaction very, very hard. So mm -hmm. thankfully, my boy's sort of midway in it. You know, he's, yeah. he's doing. Um, Dara would be midway too. Well, His speech. You know. Dara didn't have any speech. His, he couldn't. Have, he tried to speak, but he couldn't have understood what he was saying. It was like he was speaking in a foreign language, and that's why he was referred to the speech therapy. But from that and from the help he's got, he has a one to one, and um, we had to go and get funding. He's still in preschool. Yeah. And um, we had to get his one to one funded because until they go to school, yeah. they're not entitled to a one to one. Yeah. But we, we went it was like a homeschooling before yeah. getting them ready so for the big bad we went, world. Yeah, but we went to um, social services and we got it, and it has been such a great help to him. His speech has come on fantastic. It just shows you, doesn't it? Unbe yeah, unbelievable. Just for that special help on a one to one basis every day, it's come on amazing. When he went into the um, Little Folk Player Group, who have been amazing as well, he, he couldn't have understood what he said. Yeah, and I, his speech is amazing compared to it. It yeah. just shows you a bit of encouragement yeah. and you know a bit of praise along the way. But I think time, that early time years is, is, is yeah, key, you know, it's fundamental. And that's that's one of the sticking points we have uh, uh, as part of our group when we're talking and stuff as well. Like From the point where autism's first mentioned to you getting diagnosed and, and early getting intervention help. started, you're talking maybe a year and a half to two years. Easy. It's not easy, Do you is know it? And what that's I mean? a real... In a I was very lucky in the fact that it was picked up on and we got the one-to-one -one in place in his preschool yeah without you don't need a diagnosis to get that in place as long as there's definitely you know there's a need for it mm -hmm. but without that we would have been lost and could, does the diagnosis take long to diagnose basically yeah. over, yeah. A year. over a year over a year yeah and they can't That's diagnose so even though like with Lachlan when the process starts it's over a year the my god the consultant so you the so you basically the parents are left sitting for That's high yeah, and dry that, that whole for a time. whole year until yeah. they get this final diagnosis. Yeah. That, over in itself, a year. That, that in itself doesn't seem right no. to me. No, Dad like, yeah. had his first speech appointment in the September and he never got his diagnosis until the following November. So it was a year and two months. Yeah, like we're locked and we talk under the I can't, community can't get over this. far too long, yeah. You know. So Please. sort this out. <laughs> yeah. The people in the in the health service get this sorted out. Not a year. This is ridiculous. Like you know, community. leaving, leaving uh, you know, women. I'm sure there's men you know, even left high yeah, and dry. Yeah, you know? certainly. Yeah, it's like, we don't know how we to have autism dads as well. It's yeah. not yeah. just moms. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's only, but it's the thought of, you know, when you, when you think, uh, I better take my child to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And then it's a year later, minimum of a year later, before anything's really done. Or for, some, for some parents, it's that's longer. That's ridiculous. Yeah. If their I child's put on review, some children don't even, you, you get a clinic, date, a clinic date at the end of it all. And on that day, yeah, they get told, yes, they do have it, no, they don't have it, or they're not sure, and the child's put on review for maybe another six months to a year. So that's another six months a year added on to God, it, where you're still shocking, in complete limbo with no help. And, no and, and maybe, you, maybe you know, some of these people are isolated where they live, even. Yeah. And there's nobody surrounding them. Who are they going to talk to? But it's also... You know, it's, it's a sticky situation, yeah, really, isn't it? The community paediatrician said to me when Lachlan was just turned to that um, she was more or less sure that Lachlan had autism and there, there's absolutely no help. He got diagnosed with autism when he was a year and three months, year and four months, uh, or three years and four months. So we were waiting and waiting and waiting and how you parent an autistic child is completely different to how you parent oh, completely. your so, so other you, children. So you were actually parenting as a normal child and and you you didn't know you those structures yeah. in place and the whole... You but don't like, know until you learn. That's unbelievable. You know, you, you need somebody to come and show you and tell you, but none of that help is put in place until after the diagnosis. You get an official diagnosis, and then after you get your diagnosis, you're put on a waiting list. So you, the early intervention team will go out to a family for a period of time. So you have to wait till they're finished with that family to meet someone else picks up. So once, once you actually get diagnosed, it's not even kicking in straight away. It's kicking in maybe six months. months. Well, 
Um, the intervention team, I Dargan's diagnosed in November and the intervention team came out to me in January, late January. That's actually not too bad. Yeah. Because we waited but then a lot Dara longer. has a lot of needs where he needs occupational therapy. My but goodness. because the intervention team are with him at the minute, he can't get any occupational therapy because they won't cross over services. Well, I hope Dara and so Lachlan are looking in today, <laughs> giving them a big hello. You know, uh, giving them a big hello. Which is another Anna. thing that, and even the, um, the intervention therapist would say the same, they definitely, the, the children need the whole lot put in place. Yes. Rather than wait until the intervention team's finished and then get the occupational therapy because, you know, they should all be working together with them. Yeah. It's the a, intervention it's team's amazing. Yeah. Are they? The work they do and yeah. the stuff they teach you is absolutely yeah. amazing and to be honest with you it turns your life around it turns like i remember with lachlan yeah, he was so in. frustrated and so angry that you would have been sitting on the kitchen floor restraining him with your arms and legs around him because he was so strong from hurting himself and hurting the other kids and then along comes the early intervention team and it's like the simplest things mm -hmm. you know like a schedule and put that in the morning we're getting up we're going to brush our teeth, we're going to get our breakfast, we're going to brush our teeth, we're going to wash our face, we're going to get dressed. When, it, when we first got that schedule in place, we went through a whole morning with not one single meltdown. And usually by the time the breakfast was on the table, he had already <laughs> melted down two or three times. It's unbelievable. It's, it's so and simple, the, but the schedules you don't know are that. Really, are yeah. really pictures for them, so yeah. everything for them is visual, because they learn so much better from visuals. And like for Dara would go straight over to the fridge now every day to see what he's doing. I would do like a breakdown of what's happened generally over the whole day because he mm -hmm. likes to know what he's doing for the rest of the day. Right, he's a timetable setter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't that so? For the f so when you right, you got the diagnosis right, mm -hmm. and then you're left with your child and you're thinking right, what happens next? And mm -hmm. then the early intervention team come in. Mm -hmm. What's the first week? What does that feel like after getting? A bit of coaching from the early intervention team. Massive what does that feel like? You know what? It's, it, it's, it's so such simple wee things. I remember going to one of the parenting classes. They, they put on parenting classes for you as well, which you go to and they give you lots of information. But um, Dara would have a thing uh, called low muscle tone and ligament laxity. And um, it's just going and learning things. Like One of the things I can never understand, we have to feed Dara. Uh, spoon feed him. And it would take him forever to chew at times. And it's, like, it's very frustrating. Mm. But we never realised until we went to one of the parenting classes the reason he takes so long to chew is because the low muscle tone, it affects them throughout their whole body, not just their arms and their so legs. Even the jaw so muscles. it's the jaw and the muscles God in his face. Him. So when he was chewing, he didn't actually, he doesn't realise that he has chewed enough to swallow that. Mm -hmm. But at times I'd have said to him, swallow now, Dara, you've chewed it enough, swallow. <laughs> but that was why, it was because of the low muscle tone. We, it, you know, it just, That's it so makes nice. you understand all these different things that your child's doing. And then you realise, you go, oh, that's why he does that. Yeah. Whereas you never knew before. So it's every day is a single learning curve yeah. then. You're learning every and day. And it's a great help too, Elijah, because it helps <coughs> you understand your child. Yeah. Because you didn't understand them it's before. It's like a light being switched on. Yeah. Because before the early intervention team came in with Lachlan, there's nothing more devastating than you looking into your child's eyes. And you're trying to talk to them. Like the stuff you've done with the two elder ones just did not work with Lachlan. Mm -hmm. And then... <coughs> You're looking into the, it's like the lights is on and nobody's at home. You were trying to look at them to talk to him and going down onto his level and telling him that's not nice, you have hurt someone's feelings. Yeah. What you did with the other ones, but it didn't work with him. And then yeah. suddenly you can see these lights coming on and you can see things starting to get through to him. Brilliant, and isn't it? Like with Lachlan, one of the major things with his, we did time out. And we had to do this time out. <laughs> and I'm not joking you. I the girls would have come round to my house after school for a coffee and stuff. Time and out. I spent eighteen months trying to do time, time out. out. Yeah. No, I spent eighteen months on time out. It was oh. just you'd, you'd just taken him away. <laughs> he had hit his wee sister, and he used to lash out and scrape and pull oh. and hurt her. So you taken him and you give him right. Three minutes time out, that's it. So you used to have to stand at the door while he done it because he didn't like you being too far away. So you would be like, right girls, I'm doing time out again. I haven't timed out that child in over a year. But no, we went to, we went me. to five ways recently. Uh, <laughs> this is how it literally is. Went to five ways recently yeah. and brought back, do you know the wee time out bars? So he comes into the kitchen and he goes, who all wants a time out? Oh, mommy, I've been so good. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but shows you, he, he, he yeah, knows it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you quit? But you do, you, you, when you don't know, you do use the normal parenting skills that everybody else uses and you think you're doing right. And like if I used to try and put Dara in a time out, oh my God, it made the situation a thousand times worse. He would have melted but down even more. So he had the clock, so he had the sea. 
exactly yeah, how long now, yeah, sitting there that's and stuff This as is well. before we knew any of this sort of stuff, but and we would have tried to hold, put him in his bedroom. Oh, it was shocking. Yeah. It just... It, Place oh. wrecked. Place for exit, yes. <laughs> do you, do you know what it's like? It's like a Tasmanian. Do you remember Taz? Tasmanian the, yeah, devil, yeah. It's like a Tasmanian devil having that wee whirlwind yeah. thing. Yeah, and the room's just wrecked. There, the yeah. next yeah. Yeah. Listen, we didn't realise at the time we were dealing with it all wrong. Now, you can do things like time out and all, but you can't do them in the middle of a meltdown. Because if, if an autistic child in the middle of a meltdown, there's no getting through them whatsoever. Yeah. No, you just, you just, just, yeah, just, just have to stand back. Let, let them, them raid the storm. Yes, make sure they don't hurt themselves or hurt anybody else. And then after they won't say calm down, then you speak to them about it. Mm -hmm. Because if there's no point at the time, because just nothing's going, you're like talking to a wall. Yeah. It's not going um, in. Uh, um, I mean, the, the amount of strength that the autistic mm -hmm. kids have is shocking, yeah, isn't it? It really yeah. is. It would, sho it would shock an adult. They, don't, they yeah. don't hold back, you see. Yeah. They don't <coughs> hold back. They don't know how to hold back. When they're in a meltdown, they just... Oh, you know, so they have no fears, no nothing, no. no. and they don't realise. And, 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 and another child who would realise, yes, they might lash out a bit, but then they'd sort of run away and think, what have I done? Mm -hmm. You know, an autistic child doesn't. You know, until... Not in the middle it's of the incredible, night isn't it? So, what about di are the, are, are diets important then as well? Or diets are very, very tricky. Right, one. Her eaters, like with well, Lachlan, yeah. Lachlan actually is eating a lot better now. But for years, it was bananas and bread. Yeah, it was like stuff like that was dry kind of that he could hold in his hand. Yeah. If you give him a yogurt, he couldn't stand it because it was too messy. Messy all around yeah. the face. So it had to be finger foods that he could hold. But um, now he's come away good. But I'll give you one, oh, desperate one. Do not give an autistic child beans. My child was sitting there for two Only hours. Only in the band show. <laughs> check this out. Check this out, friend. <laughs> one, one evening for the tea, there was beans on his plate. And three hours later, he was still sitting and lining up all his beans <laughs> into a line. <laughs> and he had to put them in order uh, before he could eat them. So beans got excluded. Uh, <laughs> funny, Dara, Dara doesn't eat any coloured food like that. <clears throat> Dara not eat coloured food. He'll not eat beans, peas. Anything like that. There's the odd thing, like he loves red sauce, so that is coloured, but usually it's just all very, like if we were to get him to eat vegetables and stuff, it has to be all mashed up in a bowl with his potatoes. And we would have to give that to him now. Mm. But um, finger food, it's all very much the same colour. Mm -hmm. It'd be like chicken nuggets. He doesn't like sausages, it's different colour. So he eats chicken nuggets, <laughs> fish fingers, chips. And again, we never really realised any of that until we went to a parenting class and they got us to write down what our kids ate, and they said it to us, which is autistic children like to eat very bland coloured food and usually around yellowy, sort of yellowy coloured Yeah, food. just all the one yeah. colour, like, yeah. and they're happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's incredible, isn't and it? funny, there was one night not so long ago, I actually put too much variety of food on Dara's plate, um, and he he couldn't cope with it all. He too, never much, too much colour? Too yeah. much going on. And didn't, didn't it, bother it was all, with it? It was all the same sort of colour, but there was just too many things, maybe like, um, there was like a piece of garlic bread and maybe like a few chips and an onion ring and a couple of chicken nuggets, but there was just too much going on in that plate. And he sat back and ate nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I had to take stuff <laughs> off the plate. <laughs> yeah. Off goes the onion ring. Honest to God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just too, it was too much for him. <laughs> but well, Lachlan, his food wasn't allowed to touch each other as well. I don't know if Dara would be like that, but if one food touched no, another food, he couldn't eat it. It, it. it all had to be all separated. Just separate and all, yeah. and so know. we ended up getting him a week plate with the different compartments so, oh, yeah. so yeah. it actually worked out handier for that me. That makes sense but yeah. Yeah. it just shows you the, the, the small little things that make the big difference isn't it yeah. really? Mm -hmm. There's you getting the plate with sections in it and you know. I said then he was happy enough and would eat away but um, it's, it, it, it's funny. Are they into art? Do they like drawing? And Dar doesn't. He would have, a, he would have um, what they call fine motor problems with his fine motor skills. So he finds it hard to like hold um, pencils. He's very, very bad concentration. So to do any kind of colouring in anything like that, he hits it. Do, but he Just loves play doh. Enough. But then I think it's the texture of the play doh. Yeah, yeah. 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 play doh relaxing. But Lachlan, he would love drawing and stuff. So we would. It's um, there's a program out there in the BBC not too long ago. Do you know on CBBS? It was Alpha Blocks. So that brought in his fascination with number and letters. So he used to be drawing as we Alpha Blocks and stuff. And he was only after finished decorating my room. And I went in just below the light switch. There was a couple of alpha blocks through on the wall. And I still, I can't take myself to paint over them yet. But I, I, I says, Lachlan, what do you draw on the wall for? But mommy, it's alpha blocks. It says mom's room. 
What else can he do? Leave that there. <laughs> Just leave Aww. it there. I'll, I'll, do a funny one. I'll tell you a funnier one though. He drew one time a set of traffic lights. We live in a bungalow. Um, um, halfway down the hall, he drew a set of traffic lights and the traffic light was in red. Everybody who came into the house had to stop at the red traffic light before they were allowed to proceed. <laughs> Traffic lights is gone. I love that. That's, that's a classic <laughs> there now. So yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? So you, you it's know, funny now that you said that. Jared actually went into the shop the other day and the two of them were in the back of the car and it, he'd given Dara a drink of water when he came out of school and he'd spilt it on himself. But he had shot into the shop to get something. When he came back out, Dara was sat out the back window of the car with his bum out the window. So he says, what are you doing? He says, I'm trying my bum, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's hard work, but it is yeah. amazing. Yeah. So yeah. it wouldn't change it for the world. Well, well, so the, funny, the funny parts, obviously, you know, outweigh the whole lot, don't yeah. they, really? Yeah, you know? yeah definitely. And, uh, but then, see, when you get that hug off your... Like, well, Lachlan, it used to be you couldn't hug him and you couldn't touch him. And then it started that mm. it was only me. He came only to me because I was there all the time. Yeah. Mm. But see, once you get that hug and... It makes it a every big hug, single bit a big of it strong big, hug. strong for a hug, and it makes every single bit of it worthwhile yeah. when he's coming to you, looking hug. It's always on his terms, but it it's the most amazing yeah. feeling in the world as a parent, and without a doubt, it's the, the most same in our house. Job. I would get the hugs all the time, but Dara mm. does give hugs to everybody else as well. But it's all be on his terms, too. Yeah. But he, he's a hug. But he you're is, the main one. He then. is a he is a, a hugger. I have to say now, thank God. But and hugging's good, isn't it? It's good oh, for yeah, kids, it's, it's, it's good for all kids, emotions. really, isn't it? You know? Yeah, but Lachlan, I'll give you another funny one with Lachlan. Um, oh, geez, about four years ago, maybe more, his dad would be away working. No, it would be longer than that. Um, <clears throat> his dad would have been away working for, you know, a couple of months at a time. So Lachlan was very used to it being me, him, and the other kids, and that was how our routine was. So we went to the airport to pick up his dad, and he's sitting in the back of the car, and he says, Daddy, you just get back on the plane. Me and Mammy's okay. And <laughs> Daddy's sitting there, broken hearted. <laughs> couldn't wait to get home. And he's like... Great to see you. Get yeah. back on the plane there. <laughs> and just out of the airport. Daddy, get back on the plane. Oh, and go, and on and you go. Me and Mammy's okay. You me know? and Mammy's okay. Yeah. It's not brilliant. Because he knew that well, he, his dad no. would come back and upset the structure of the house, you see. And, you know, things would be different. Know, so so wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that is the matter of fact. And, you yeah. know, well, that's the matter of fact to him. And there's no big going to change yeah. that yeah. one. But that's a good one. I'd love to see the face of him coming off the plane. No, get back on the plane. <laughs> me and mum's okay. <laughs> I think my kids will be saying that after this show. Hey, dad, get back on the plane. We don't want you anymore. But uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, as I say, every day is a learning curve. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, when the good parts outweigh the whole, any bad yeah, part, and, definitely. you know, and the meltdowns and all, you know. Yeah. But then another amazing part of it is with this, with the group that's being set up, we have met the most amazing parents and mm -hmm. through this group we are making new friends as well. We are you know, yeah. like and that's I would be. never have known Aideen ever probably would never have no. bumped into you. No. Uh, but through the group we are making the best of friends with parents and most importantly parents that understand you, friends that understand you and understand uh, what the, what your child's going through, what you're going through. Like yeah. if Aideen came to me and says this child has not slept for two nights solid. He has been up. I said, oh, jeez, I remember the night. So yeah. we all have things in common. Yeah. But we we are also with the group, we're doing our first fun, big fundraising night on the 17th of May. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We've got um, the poster in here, friends. I'm just going to unfurl this lovely poster here. Let's see, can, I get, can you get it there? Uh, so there you go, friends. Look, fundraising night. And it's, it's, a, it's going to be a big night. It's a, a fun-filled night with Irish yeah. dancing. DJ, buffet, ooh, a buffet yeah. and all, a buffet, don't forget that one, auction and raffle, and a signed down GEA jersey, now that's worth money, you know uh -huh. yourself, I'm a Plus, we're on. also getting it signed by and the All-Ireland winning captains as well, isn't that yeah. right? Wow, that's going to be something. And that's manager. something, that's and something manager. special, and the manager, isn't that something special? Well, there you yeah. go, and a signed Celtic jersey as well, and it's going to be the Newry Shamrocks GAC down in the Green Bank on the Warren Point Road, Saturday the 17th of May, commencing at 8 o'clock and the admission's £5. That's a big night for a favour, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Big night there for a favour. So um, get down to it. I'll, I'll hopefully get down to that, you know. There's loads more <coughs> prizes as well. Yeah. We're going to have an auction, um, we're going to have a raffle. The prizes and the support from the local community has been amazing. It really has. And it actually shocks us that we're getting yeah. such amazing support because it goes to show what need there is there for it and how prevalent autism is now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, if yeah. If you know what I mean. So 
there's nobody that you'll talk to that doesn't know somebody with autism now or doesn't have a friend or a cousin or, or a relative I think people or somebody, are a lot yeah. more open about it now. Yeah. yeah. I think years ago whenever first you know autism was ever mentioned, you know, people were very oh, Taboo, yeah. standoffish, like, yeah. Yeah, um, and, didn't re and again, that's true lack of knowledge, yeah. more than anything. Yeah. You know, and um, I remember whenever whenever it was first said to me about uh, having autism, I, all I could think of was, my God, is my child going to be labelled? Mm -hmm. You know, is it a label being yeah. put on a child? But it's, it's not, <coughs> you know, and there are so many kids out there that do have it. Yeah. And and the, you know, and, uh, but... You know, they're, they are, they're, I know, well, as my own cousin, for example, and mm -hmm. he's, he's in his late 50s now, you know, and he's a happy camper. Mm -hmm. As long yeah. as his structure's day is structured, he's a happy camper. Yeah, that's the you thing, know? autism's there for life. We're saying this is for uh, autistic children, Kids, yeah. you know, but the children within the group is ranging from <clears throat> two, year and a half to two, right up to 20 something. So even, even mm -hmm. older, People with autism can join the group. There you go. It's open but to anybody. this group's open to any anybody. family with yeah. autism you know, in their family. If, if yeah. you are going through autism, we are there. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Plus, I mightn't have a thirty-year-old. I mightn't be a thirty-year-old with autism, but a thirty-year-old with autism coming along, giving a twelve-year-old advice, wouldn't that be amazing? That would be mm. spectacular. To so, say the least. And that's it? the aim. Of the group. They're the ones that know the best. Exactly. Well, they're, yeah. the, they're the ones with the big experience yeah. at this stage. You yeah. know. So the money raised on the night, we're doing this to raise money and the money raised on the night as any parent of a child with autism will know when the summer holidays come and the routine of school uh, is nightmare. gone, it is a nightmare. So what we're doing with this is we're going to do like... Never, see, I never thought that there's yeah. another one. Little, oh, it's little. so difficult. The money raised on this, what we're planning to do is do... Um, activities over the summer, take them like on we race bike days. We have, we're presently uh, talking to Coromela in Ballycastle to do a couple yeah. of day retreat. Down there would be amazing. And because we are all together, we're all parents together, we understand if anything needs to go off and the wee man's having a meltdown, we know, labour to it, there, nobody's going to be standing looking going, yeah. oh geez, look yeah. at that yeah. child there, it's a bad tempered wee devil, yeah. whatever. So <clears throat> we're going to do different wee fun fill days and wee trips out and stuff like that to try and give them some structure and some routine and stuff over the summer holidays when they're missing it. And to be honest, they're, you hit meltdown central again because they miss their routine. Yeah, they you do. can see into that now. Yeah. So the, that would that's actually a good idea. And that Corey Mela, I mean. It's going, it must be going 30 something years, yeah, 40 years maybe, is it? In it I was in it as a teenager, so yeah. was, and it's amazing. And the whole structure of it, um, you're, you're within the confines of like a wee area, and there's a accommodation area, there's a recreation mm. area, there's like um, a, merely like a meditation area. But it's lovely, peaceful things, and they would do different workshops and stuff with the kids. We're trying to sort that at the moment to try and do a couple of day break, mm. sort of retreat with them. But we've got loads of other things all planned for the summer. We're going to do a. Do you um, need? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's it. We Going really forward will need it. to, um, <clears throat> we're wanting to have at the minute we're having our our um, play and chat sessions in the funhouse on a monthly basis. But going forward, we want to have our own. Um, well, have run it out of a premises, but we're going to have a weekly play session, where the parents and the children, because it's so important to for our children going forward that they make friendships and with each other yeah so they're they're there going through their teenage years and that that they can support each other and a connections made a connection, yeah. yeah so we want to have a weekly play session where we're plus two parents aren't at the expense of having to go to the fun house the fun house yeah. will become more of a treat yeah. Yeah. yeah you know more of a treat Th for them that, and that makes sense yeah. again because if you you know if you bring them to the fun house all the time then they yeah. get to expect that you know yeah. and Yes, yeah, the treat so them's good. Yeah, like that. Yeah, we're also more of a treat. Buying our own equipment. Mm. And yeah, do you know stuff like that going as well? Forward. So, and then the other <coughs> big thing is too going forward. Um, the fact that there is no, at the minute, there's no services in place for autistic kids when they turn 18. All services disappear. So going forward, Shocking. we definitely will be lobbying for more services put in place for kids because at the end of the of day, course, when yeah. they turn 18, it doesn't mean they're not autistic anymore. And there needs to be a lot more services put in place. And that's for something we only learned through this group. Yeah, we didn't we know about this it. until we were actually parents, shocked. A parent joined us and was telling yeah. us everything, and we were shocked. This is unbelievable. From like yeah. 17 and 11 months, everything's there. They're in full time education, everything. 18, it's gone. gone. 
Like, I thought it wouldn't make so any unfair. sense whatsoever. No. So I'm that not, definitely something you know, that needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed, yeah. you know, because uh, you, you, you ladies are, you know, you are we'll the ones that are... We'll be getting up there. Well, my child's eight now. It's not uh, directly affecting me yet, but it yeah. will. Ten years, you know time. What I mean? yeah. just coming up <coughs> there. Try, it'll be something that our group will definitely be well, pushing it needs to, for. Well, it needs to be addressed, I think, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. because... Uh, Okay, your child's been diagnosed. What, so when it comes to 18, no, you're an adult now, so you don't have it, or what What the hell does exactly. that mean it's to a, me, you know? There's yeah. very little learn adult services at all for... But it is, I was talking <coughs> to Dara, a support worker that comes out, and she's, she was telling me that it is something that is going to be put in place. But to what extent, I don't know, yeah. but we'll definitely be pushing for well, I, better I services for our kids. I think you should all do. autistic children. Yeah, that and it's not even for the right children, for yourselves, it's for the benefit yeah. of the youth as well. Yeah. Right, there should uh, be I, that doesn't, in place. I can't work that one out at all. I know. You know. Even to help them get jobs, to settle into jobs, you know what I mean, jobs that are suitable to their needs, all those sort of things yeah. need to be put in place for adults with autism. Yeah, because I know there are jobs you know, out there um, for, for various disablements, you know. Um, mm -hmm. if, I, I, see, I can't mention names, but I know, I know, I know another autistic guy, and this guy's in his 70s, maybe 80s, Still very active man, and and, and made, every time we meet him, I stop and I have a bit of banter with him in the street mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he says, "Well, are you working?" He says, "Yeah, I'm making bricks." I says, "You're making bricks, paper bricks for burning." I thought he was making bricks for oh, building. Yeah. So they're making these paper bricks for burning. Yeah. And he what? says, "You know, he's all chuffed. Got got a new job. I'm making bricks." Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and this is this yeah. is a, a character of Nuri, you know, a real character of Nuri, and he's still very active and. You know, he got he got the rough end of the stick back in the days, and, and like in the you know when the, very, very when the troubles and all were on in your e back then, and there was nothing, there was no yeah. facilities for anybody. That's you know, and this 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 man was getting he was getting beat up on a really you know on a daily basis and all. That's but he's he's he's, he's, uh, he, he's now a character. He goes he goes in and out of pubs. He doesn't drink. He just goes in for a bit of banter. Really, you know, talks about football, and then he go back out again. You, yeah. know, mm. you know, if some if somebody has a sweet or a bun or anything. Whoop, that's definitely he'll scoff the whole pack of them and then he'll go, you know. But uh, so I, I I can't get over that one. So when the, when your child's eighteen, I mean that has to be that has yeah. to be looked at. That's that's definitely. But if you take such a dramatic difference, like we're talking about our kids out of school for the summer and we're trying to put something in place to try and give them that routine and stuff like that to try and keep them grounded. Yeah. But if you think a child in full time education up until eighteen, then it completely taken away from them. It's so unfair and then you're just when they're getting used to it. <coughs> There's no support. There's just, just when they got yeah. used to it. But you have a child retreating into their room. What else have they got to do? They're in their room, they're listening to music, and then the child's starting to become a bit recluse that is, the child doesn't want to come out then. Mm -hmm. So that really, really, really needs to change big yeah. time. You Storm know. it, look out. Yep. I can tell you. Autism, <laughs> autism, mums are, autism mums are on the way up to Storm yeah. it, and they're going to rot you guys. Well, Carla, when that day, they'll be yeah. afraid. <laughs> the Storm is all decked out in pink today, I can tell you. Not but pink when these ladies go no. up here. <laughs> Get the bandages out, but rightly so. Rightly, so. don't let them off. If this needs no. to go to storm it, they're the government government body for this part of the world. So storm it. Look out, autism mums are going to come up to you, you okay. know. And that's where yeah. it should be going to, right to the top level, you know. Uh -huh. let, and I find that completely shocking. So but when we know, find that it shocking, we did too. We we it's said don't find it. it. To be <laughs> completely honest with you. you know, that's why as soon as <clears> I heard that day, and I said, well, that is definitely something this group will be doing in the future. Well, there's enough of you now. Yeah. yeah. There is enough, and you, you, you have got the word. And, and the mums is amazing. Like, the other mums yeah. in the group, is, um, they are amazing. Like, we initially said about doing our fundraising night at our last um, playing chat session down yeah. in the fun house. Fun house. And there wasn't one parent that sat back and says, well, I don't want to do, do anything. Every parent was saying, give me a shout. I'll do whatever you want. It'll be no problem. So this is a real group effort, this whole night coming together. Yeah. And just ask as many people as possible to come along and show us your support. And there have a go. good night's crack. For yeah, it's only very five pounds. Five pounds. A favour. A favour. And a it's favor. past eight o'clock and it's doing the Shamrocks. You wouldn't even Shamrocks get your Chinese for a favour. You couldn't. You <laughs> couldn't. You couldn't <laughs> even get a burger down the town. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't get a burger down the town. Because you have to get a chip and then a drink. Yeah. And it Ooh. comes at six, well, seven pounds. five pounds is plenty because in this day and age nobody has got very much money. Yeah. So we weren't going to start putting ten pounds or anything to get and on we it. We wanted it open to as many people as possible. Yeah. You know, uh, and then as it's, well. good, it's good for raising awareness for autism. You know, mm -hmm. for the condition of it because it's yeah. it's it, this isn't something that uh, that they can you know that's handy to deal with. It's not no. you know. No. 
And it's not a physical disability where, you know, uh, only needs a wheelchair, he only needs a walking yeah. stick. And no, it's, this is completely different, isn't it? That's no, it. And, and as you say, it's life for long. life. It's mm -hmm. lifelong. Yeah. So as long as you guys are alive, you still have to deal with us, don't you? That's it. And then you know? is, my thinking is now, with my wee man, the more I do for him now, and the more I push him now to be independent, I want, when Lachlan first got diagnosed, grieving wasn't the word for it, I thought my whole world had come to an end. He wasn't going to be able to go to school like the others. He wasn't going to be able to do this. He wasn't going to be able to mm. do that. Lachlan's a mainstream school with his big brother. There you go. And he is doing fantastically well. But the, we want to put uh, raise awareness and put all those things. We want well-rounded adults going out into the workplace. You don't, in all, you don't want your child to be sat at home and doing nothing with their lives. The autism's not going to stop that. Your child's still going to go and do the best they can do and be the best they can be, you know? And I can see that's, mm. that's where the smile come on the ladies' faces. I don't know why you've noticed that, but these, <laughs> this is girl power as best as I can call yeah, it, you know? Yeah, you're right. But, isn't uh, <laughs> but it's you our know? job to do that. If, yeah. we, if We can't expect nobody else to come along and do that for us. But I think it's fantastic because we've all come together just out of the blue, nearly. And yeah. Carla started off his Facebook page and for support, and then all of a sudden this just fantastic group just came out of the blue and we all want the same thing for yeah. our kids. We're all prepared to put so much work and so much effort, effort in and at the end of the day all it ever comes back to is for our kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it's about. And then you it's know I, I, not only that you're not on your own you, yeah. you're realising yourself this, well, this lady's the same as me. Yeah. And yeah. So and we're all We're all the us, same you know? as in everybody is just the same attitude we're doing it for our kids. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Well, I commend you. Uh, I commend the autism mums. And I can tell you, get another look at this. Don't forget, friends, don't forget, Saturday the 17th of May, there's it there, down in the Green Bank, the Shamrocks, and Irish Johnson, DJ, a uh, buffet. Don't forget about the buffet. <laughs> uh, you know, it's all happening. Raffle and everything. So it, yeah. that is going to be, that's going to be a great night. Auction and raffle. Signed down GEA jersey. Signed Celtic jersey. And... These ladies. Well. The Van Arma one as well. Brilliant, the Arma The Van Arma supporters. Big down supporters here, but the Van Arma ones as well. So the Arma jersey's getting auctioned first, by the way. So anybody from Arma, nip down to the Green Bank, you can get yourself a real nice, um, a good, good Arma jersey. Come on, support your own county. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get them in. How long? You know, well, there's going to be down in Arma <laughs> jerseys. Try get the picture. <laughs> fight live. On cue. Fight live. <laughs> Big fight in the Bonto show live, friends. Well, I have to say, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you in, um, Aideen and Alicia. And I do want you to come in again sometime and let me know oh, how really? the group's going. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, if there's anything I can do here on the Panther Show to, to get, spread the good word out there to, the, to our friends out. Yeah, and any parents at all that world. want to join our group, come ahead. We have there our um, another play session tomorrow morning in the Fun House at half ten, and everybody's more than welcome to come down. There you go, half ten in the morning, s Saturday morning. What's down in, in, the, in the playhouse. Uh, 5.50 and they're getting their juice and they're toasting yep. their play and stuff. Plus also find us on Facebook as well. Autism Moms, mm -hmm. we're a closed group. Whatever we discuss within that group is between it's, it's us between mothers. The group. There's between nobody the group. on that group that yeah. isn't an aut autism parent. Yeah. There's autism dads there as well. The yeah. group's called Autism Moms, but yeah. autism dads as well. There's nobody on that group that isn't an autism parent. So come along, join the group. Even if you just want to sit in the background and just ask the odd wee question in a private message, whatever, we're there, and that's what it's all about. There you go. <laughs> You've heard it here live in the Bantha Show, friends, and I have to say, that is a fantastic service, what you're putting out there. I, I really commend you, and um, as I say, if I can do anything more for you to spread the word, let me know. Uh, so, friends, get down to this night in the Green Bank, Saturday the 17th of May, down at the Shamrocks. It's going to be a big night. There's an Armagh jersey for a raffle. And a couple of down jerseys and Celtic jerseys. There's loads of jerseys for Ravel. Come down, it's only a favour in. Yeah, and we also have tickets available to buy locally. They're in Beautified in Hill Street and Hallmark in Hill Street as well. So if anybody wants to pop in and buy a wee ticket, there's some still available there as well. For the night. For the night, yeah. For the night. And if you've got anybody in your family with autism, come and speak to these ladies. I mean, why not? You know, you don't, you don't want to be left out there in your own. Come in, talk to the ladies, and uh, they, all they can do is help you. That's so it. that's yep. that's basically it. So I really do. It's been a pleasure to have you in the studio, and uh, I'll probably try and get down to this myself yes, and show a bit of support you. to you. As you know, you'd be very welcome. So from me and the ladies here.
give us a wee razor here, no? two on the right, one on the left. Razor! <laughs> oh, what is that? Right. Right. Razor. Razor. So, razor. Big razor from me and the girls at the minute. Friends, we're out of here. Razor.